Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here from snowy Sudbury, Massachusetts. We got about a foot of snow here a couple of days ago, and it was heavy and wet, and we had to shovel it. Uh, we have this long driveway, well, longer than we've ever had before. So I'm really proud to say my husband and I, we tackled it and we, we got it done. We do have a snow blower. Um, but it's not a super snow blower, so, um, but we managed to do it. It was good exercise. My arm was a little sore afterwards. I don't usually do uh, snow shoveling. I'm like most of us, right? We only do it a certain time of the year, so we got it done. Did anyone else get snow? Um, and now after the snow, we're gonna have a rain coming tonight. So uh, it's gonna be really crazy. Um, uh, this is our first year, full year in our house, so we're still trying to figure out all the intricacies. So, so far, so good. There's been some minor little hiccups, but um, we're we're getting to know our house, and hopefully everything will be safe and sound, even with the rain on top of the snow. It always makes me a little nervous because, you know, that snow can cause, um, you know, runoff where you don't want it. So we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here to join me and you're probably not here to learn about my weather. Um, so let me tell you um, probably what you are here for. And um, we are gonna be doing some card making today. And today specifically is our Casing Tuesday card challenge. And this was a challenge that um, one of my team members several years ago started and um, she would take a card out of the catalog and she would reproduce it exactly. And I thought it'd be kind of fun if we took that card and we could change it up. So sometimes we would do it exactly and sometimes we would change it up. And that's um, how Casing Tuesday came about. Casing is when we copy and share everything. So copy a card and the catalog's the perfect way to do that because most people, um, well, everyone can have access to the catalog because it's available as a PDF online. Or um, if you have a demonstrator, if I'm your demonstrator, I will send you a copy of the catalog and you'll have that. And these catalogs have lots of samples that you can copy. So um, I'm going to show you what today's card is. Let's take a peek at it. Here's the card. Actually, this was my selection. I think it's a nice, simple layout. You can have a big area for, you could use designer's use paper or you can stamp something like that little bird. And then you can have a little area for your greeting. Um, and I actually changed mine up a little bit. So I'll show you in a second how mine came out um, and here is the sketch and this just will help you with the measurements. If you're not kind of familiar with our typical Stampin' Up! card, this is going to give you a guide for what the original measurements were. Now, these are not written in stone. Please feel free to change it up or maybe even delete a layer, which I did today. So let me show you what I came up with. So here is my card and I just got this bundle like a day ago or maybe two days ago now and I had to use it right away. It is so cute. It's got this little mailbox and look, this little letter can slip out and you can actually, this is a real envelope, a real teeny tiny envelope, a die makes this and you can even put a little like note inside of here, a secret little note. So that just kind of pops back into the mailbox. You can stick it in as far as you want and then you've got this little tiny flag that's interactive and it's so cute. So there's my card. Now, if you want to compare that to the original card, oops, let me shove this off to the side a little bit and shove my card this way and up. Okay, it's hard because I'm being mirrored. Okay, so you can kind of see I've kind of got the same, a little bit of the same stuff going on but it's not, it's not exact, right? It's, but it, but it is, it's got some of the same flavor of the original card. How fun is that, right? We take a card and we, we kind of make it a little different. Now, if you like the original card, go for it. Make it exactly the way it was. You can change up just a few things, but you don't have to. 
and we have a Facebook group for that. So um, join us in our Facebook group, um, copy this week's card or give it a makeover and um, join us on the Facebook group. And we also love to see comments on our Facebook group. It's not just me that's doing this. Um, my team member, Catalina and I, when we started this a long time ago, um, we we were it was just the two of us she started first then it was me that joined in and then we um, got more people to join in so there's a group of us that do this every week but we also invite everyone else to join us as well so please feel free to do this challenge um, it's great if you're a new stamper because you have a starting point and it's great also if you're an experienced stamper because the layout or the the feel of the card might be different than what you're used to. So it will push you outside your comfort zone of what cards are. So I hope you will join us. I will talk to all of you at the end. I see that lots of you have popped on. I'm going live both on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So um, I see comments coming in from both sides. So that's wonderful. And I'm gonna pop over to my other camera. I'm just seeing that I have my microphone kind of in the way. Let me see. Okay. I wonder if I can get a little bit more light on my... I don't think it's sunny today. Let's see. Let me see if I can pull up and get some more light. Okay. There we go. It's always good to have lots of light, right? It still looks dark to me, but... I'll have to go with that because this is what I got. Okay, so here's the card and here is the bundle. It's called Sending Love and it's got all these die cut pieces. So you'll see this is the mailbox that I'm going to use. This is the letter. This is the grass. This is the mailbox pole. Um, and here's the little flag. So the dies are really cool, but they interact too. So you can stamp this piece and die cut it out with this piece here. Um, and there's some stamps that I'm going to be using as well. So they work really well together. But uh, you can see if you, um, the dies were kind of cute on their own as well. All right, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you something cool today. We're gonna to be doing some brayering today. Um, so first of all, you're gonna need your card base. And this is um, just eight and a half by five and a half. And I scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. And let me fold this along the score line real quick. And I just smoothed it down. We can set this aside for now because we're not going to do um, anything. Actually, we will do one thing, and I'm going to do it real quick before I forget. <clears throat> I've got my Sweet Sorbet cardstock and my Sweet Sorbet ink pad. And I am just going to do a little random stamping at the edges. You can kind of see I've got a few little peek outs going and I just want to have like a few little little hearts peeking out on the edges it's probably very hard to see but you can kind of get the gist um, and these are the hearts they're right in the set so let's move that out of the way I just I, I knew I was going to forget that if I did it later so I'll just set this aside I'm gonna show you how to make this background right here. See that kind of marbled pool party look right there? Um, it is, it's just got this nice um, kind of marble effect. So in our catalog that just started, the John to April catalog, we now have a brayer. And this brayer is great because on one hand, we've got this little stand right here. So when you're not in use, if you've inked this up, you'll want to put it like this. But when you're rolling, you want to flip it over so these aren't in, these little things aren't in the way. So this is the little stand and this is the side where you will roll. And brayering um, has been around for a long time. We used to do it a lot. There is a little bit of skill involved and it's been a while since I brayered so I kind of was just like hey let me just throw myself in here and let's try and um, 
do a background. I did not want a background that was completely one color. I wanted a background that had a little bit of color and a little bit of white. So I'm gonna take my pool party ink pad. I inked this up last night, so it's a little bit more inky than when I was doing this. Okay, and so it might be a little bit darker when I, I do this. And when you brayer, you're taking off a lot of ink off of your ink pad. So I do recommend that if you know you're gonna be brayering in a color that you also get the ink refill because you're gonna want to replenish that ink on your ink pad. So I did put the Pool Party ink refill in the, um, supply list just in case we we have ink refills for all the colors though so if you're not using pool party if you're using a different color just do a search for it and you will find the ink refill for every color that we have currently uh, if you have trouble finding anything you can always send me a message all right so you're going to just start to kind of ink this up and I can already tell this is going to be darker than before and you just want to roll it and you want to get it um, you want to get it to have some coverage. So you want to go on different points of the ink pad because this is a little wider than the ink pad. So you're going to just kind of roll and get it kind of going kind of all over your brayer. And once you've got pretty good coverage, um, this always better to practice first on scrap paper when you're starting out this piece is three and a half by four and three quarters and I'm going to go on an angle um, and this is my glass mat studio that's one of the starter kit options right now so this is great because I'm going to be able to wipe this off afterwards so I'm just going to roll very lightly don't press down hard and I'm going to just kind of go in different directions so I'm just going to go like this and like this like this and just lay down some ink. I can tell this is a lot darker than what I was doing before. So you want to go really light. So let's just for interest sake, I've got an, this is kind of my sky look right now. Let's grab another piece. I still have some ink on here. So let's kind of just do this and kind of do this with a little bit lighter. And as you work on this piece, you can start to press harder to get the residual ink on. There's a, just a little piece. So when my ink pad was really light, it had like a different look than this one does now. Okay, so I've got like a sky kind of marbling look going on right here and I love that it's just fun you can see a few of the little brayer lines but it doesn't it's not very stark or 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 dark so it just kind of looks like kind of a cool background so just don't don't feel like you have to have like the perfect background when you start off I'm gonna I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use we'll have to see I'm gonna first let's Move the sprayer aside, put it in a safe spot. This chamois comes with your glass mat studio. You just wet it and then you can wipe off your surface. And let's just let that dry for just a second. I can kind of see the reflection. It's almost, almost dry. A chamois is really good because it doesn't put down too much water. So it's almost dry. And just a few last streaks. Just don't want to put my cardstock onto wet stuff. All right, I'm going to do a wipe of my sleeve to get those last streaks. Okay, it's pretty dry now. So just in case you don't know, right now we have a starter kit um, that is on special during celebration. And the starter kit's $99. And option one of the special is to get this glass mat studio, which includes the glass mat this silicone mat which will stick to your glass mat and you can hold supplies on here and you get this chamois which will clean off your glass mat beautifully 
Option number two is you get $30 extra in your starter kit. Normally, you're, you're going to get, with either option, you're going to get $125 with a product in your starter kit. And um, the glass mat studio um, option, that's all you'll get, $125 plus the glass mat studio. But if you don't want the glass mat studio, you're going to get a 30 extra dollars, which would mean you get $155 in product for only $99. So if you're interested in that, um, uh, you can check out, this is my um, join a page, my starter kit page, and that will have more information on there for you, or please reach out to me. Okay, let me put that away for a sec. Okay, we're gonna move along and we're gonna do some die cutting because this is a very die cut heavy card. We're gonna take out our big machine because there's several die cuts. I'm not sure, some of them might fit through the mini machine. So we'll have to take a look at that and see if that's the case in a second. So we want to have um, pool party is going to be our mailbox. So I'm going to just take that and plop this down. I'm going to have to twist this piece or die cut just a little bit so it will fit on. We're going to need a piece of crumb cake and we'll put our little post on there. Uh, we're going to need a piece of basic white and that's going to be for the letter. We're going to need a piece of granny apple green and some sweet sorbet and we'll put the flag on there and we'll put this on here and just take a quick peek to make sure everything is on the cardstock. So um, I've got my base platform, my thin die adapter and a clear plate. Then I put the cardstock, the dies facing down, and we're gonna run this through. All right. So look, the mailbox has a little hole for the flag, which is great. I've got the little flag right here. Strip off our dies over on the side so I don't lose them. Here is my little envelope. Here is my post. If it doesn't come out right away, just use something pokey. And uh, it has texture on it, so you don't have to do anything extra for it. And okay, I think I'm missing one. Yes. And here is that grass mound. All right. So I wanted to see real quick if these pieces would actually fit through the mini machine. Let's take a quick look. I'm gonna just grab, okay, I'm just gonna grab the plates because if it fits on the plate. So um, this is how I would um, run this through the mini machine. So the die cuts we just used, the biggest one right here is this one. So if you're creative, you could get this through the mini machine. You just have to make sure that your cardstock is cut so that it doesn't stick out here. So you, you could get this through. This is the hardest piece but it would fit through if you angled it and you might have to trim your cardstock a little bit. So if you just have a mini machine, you could still do this card with the mini machine. Just wanted to check that out for you. All right, let's put those away. It will take a few passes though, because you're going to be cutting um, everything. You won't be able to put everything on that big mat. So let's grab our pieces. And the first thing we wanna do is we need to attach this flag. These round and square brads are great for that. I'm gonna use one of these little white ones. These are the little tiny ones. And we're going to grab our little flag, feed that little brad through there, 
feed it through the little hole and then push down the legs. This works perfectly. Okay, so now we're gonna fold this piece along the score lines. And there's one little, one more little score line. You wanna make sure that this is pretty flattened because you wanna make sure that your letter can slide in and out of there. This, I wanted to show you this too. This little piece actually will fold up too if you want it to have like a closed mailbox, you could have a closed mailbox, but I'm gonna leave mine open and just tighten that just a little bit so my little flag doesn't flop all over the place. And we'll put Tombow. I need to start a new Tombow. I'm a little worried because this one's new, so sometimes it will gush a little bit because it's just got more, more glue. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep it up right now because it's got it's got a lot of glue in it. Okay, let's press that down. Okay, and I've got a little glue on my surface. So I'm just gonna grab my chamois and clean that up. Wait for that area to dry. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna to decide to, do I want to go with my really dark piece? I have a feeling like that might be a little too dark. I might go with my slightly lighter piece and I'm gonna save this one for the inside. Okay, so this is almost dry. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna glue this down right here and I'm gonna glue it down about the same width as my post. That's gonna be from the bottom to the side. That will be kind of the perfect measurement. Like right about there. Okay. Then we'll take this piece, this is the grass. And I'll just add that right to this corner here and right along the bottom. Okay, then I'm gonna lay this down where I want it. I spent some time getting it in the right spot, so I'm gonna try and put it in about the same spot as I had before. And before I do that, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna stamp my hearts in the corner. Um, I wasn't sure if I liked the brightness of those red hearts, and I was gonna see if blue hearts would look better, but you know what? I think I'm just gonna go with, with the red. I don't know, I think, I don't know if I should try with the blue. Okay, I'll have to show you the inside. This is the inside. So I did little blue hearts there on the inside. So maybe I should try it with the blue heart so we can compare. All right, I'm gonna do a comparison one. This is a little darker though, so I'm not sure if it's gonna show up quite as well, but we'll see. It's still pretty inky from before, so I'm just gonna add the hearts right there. And we'll do a little comparison because this is very subtle now, but there's enough red on the card that you know, it should be fine. We can do a comparison shot. Okay, so now we have the hearts on there. We'll just put glue on the back of this. And I'm not gonna put glue on, I wanna put this back in, but I think it's still too too flowy. Um, I'm not gonna put glue on the back of here in case anyone wants to play with that piece. It's just like, I wanna keep as much interactive quality to the card as possible. So we'll just kind of line this up. I have this hanging off just a wee bit. And in case you're wondering, this back part of the mailbox is open, but 
the way everything fits together, it's a pretty tight fit. So I don't think you're going to have to have a worry about your letter slipping out the back of that. Um, if you are worried, you could always maybe do a little bit of tear and tape or a teeny tiny bit of glue on the back to seal that. But I don't think it's necessary. Okay, so <clears throat> next up, we've got this little envelope. And I if you're going to be mailing this, I made this one out of basic white cardstock and I don't have anything inside it. But if I were to put a piece of cardstock inside it, I wouldn't make like a little card. I would just do like a single piece. If I was going to mail this and wanted to cut down on the bulk, I would use regular computer paper for the envelope so it would be lighter and then just put a little cardstock piece on the inside. And I just wrote a little message. I stamped the heart and then I said, I love you. I'm just gonna measure this down here on the corner where you can't see. This is about one and five eighths by just shy of seven eighths. Probably if you did one and five eighths by three and a quarter inches, that would be the perfect little size for a single layer piece. You could double up and make it like a true card. The only reason I didn't is because generally I do mail my cards and I don't want my card to be super, super bulky. So um, using um, computer paper is just far better for that. Um, it makes for a lighter piece. And I will just tell you real quick, I put a teeny tiny bit of Tombow on the end right here and I let it dry. And so now it's kind of resealable. So I'm just gonna close this real quick. Oh. I put it in crooked, so it's not pushing in very nicely. Okay, let's put this in. And then I'm just gonna press this down. And because I've got, it's kind of like, I just put a teeny tiny on the end, I can peel this off again. And it's just got enough sticky so you can close it up again. All right. So that's what I would do if I, I wanted to kind of keep the bulk down. You do have the flag, you do have doubled over cardstock here. So there's still a bit of bulk, but nowhere near as bulky as if you put in a piece of um, cardstock. But I'm going to show you the cardstock way. Um, and this piece, you're just going to fold along the score lines. You can use your bone folder to help smooth those folds down and I keep folding or gluing this together the wrong way so let me see if I can get it done the right way now I think these are supposed to come in and this is supposed to come up and then that's supposed to come down for the life of me I have just been gluing this the wrong way so I'm just gonna put so the sides come in first I'm just gonna try and put like a teeny tiny Come on. Now this is stuck because I don't have this sitting upside down. That's why you need to keep it upside down when you're working. I just, there's just so much glue coming out when you first open a bottle that I like, I like the flow a lot better after a while. So I've got a lot of glue going on there. So take a scrap piece of cardstock. And you're going to remove as much glue as possible. Just take it right off. It still will be sticky. Okay, because you don't want all of that glue to... Okay, so now the sides will go in and in, and this will go on here. Just press this down for a second. It should still be sticky enough. Okay, so now this is going to be the little flap. So let's put that down, oops, like that. Grab our little heart. I still have my sweet sorbet ink pad open. Let's just pop a little heart onto there. All right, and then, so if you want this to reopen, just put like a little dot of glue I'm just gonna take a little bit off of there. We're just gonna let that dry for a little bit and then hopefully we'll create like a little 
spot that it that it will stick together and we can open it when we want to okay so now we need to bring in our card base and we're going to glue this piece onto here this sweet sorbet background really makes the card pop so we'll just go ahead and put tombow on the back centering it from top to bottom but we're moving it closer to this side than to this side okay that's per the card layout I'm just trying to move my granny apple green piece down a bit it was a little crooked okay and then we're going to take this is great baker's twine and all of our in colors that are going to be retiring this year and this is sweet sorbet let's take this we're going to run it in the inside of the card we need enough length to tie a bow let's see just kind of measuring That should be enough. Set that aside. My knot's gonna be a little bit down towards the bottom. So we'll tie our first knot. And then I'm gonna use these tweezers. They're locking tweezers from the Embossing Additions Toolkit. We'll just lock that knot into place. And then we'll tie a bow. Pull on the ends. Okay. Now I'm going to release this. I'm going to tighten up that knot further. And then I'll just kind of play with it to create those loops. And then we have the little ends coming off the side like that. It just looks kind of cute. All right, let's let's grab our little envelope. Let's see if this is going to stick down for us. Give this a little press, okay? And then we can pop that inside here, and you can put it in as far as you want. It's interacting with the back of the, the brad, so you can stick it in like this. Probably nice to see a little bit of the heart, or I kind of like it just coming out. You can manipulate this piece as much as you want. And there you go. That is it. And so as for the hearts at the top, so the two differences, or, or the one difference with this card, let's hold these up a little bit. You see on the right, right here, I have the pool party hearts up at the top right corner of the card. And then on my left, I have them in sweet sorbet. So it kind of depends how subtle you want things. If you want them a little bit more subtle, you'll go with like a lighter color, like pool party, like in the background. Or if you want them a little darker, you'll go with the sweet sorbet that I have on the left. So there are the two differences. You can also see maybe a little bit the difference between brayering with a darker ink pad versus a lighter ink pad. Both of them look good though. Um, this one's just a little lighter, a little smoother. This one you can see some of the brayer marks on there, but the background was so super quick. So this piece right here, we can use for the inside. So I'm just going to show you how I would finish this off. You can just take your sweet sorbet ink pad again, and you can turn this into a Valentine's card if you wanted to. Just going to grab. You can um, use maybe a, um, this stamp set. This is throughout the year. Um, you could use Be My Valentine from there if you wanted to turn it into a Valentine stamp set. 
but it can be a friendship card to you know a lot of our friends may not be close to where we live so you can stamp this and just go put it kind of in the center I always like to when I'm doing um, a, a card when this is going to be my layer that I write on I always like to put my greeting nearer to the top so I can put the person's name and then still have a little bit more room on the bottom part to write and then I'm going to come in with where did my little hearts go and I guess I did do these in pool party so I'm going to do the pool party look again and this is going to be very subtle because this is a very, very dark background. But you can still kind of see the little hearts that are right there. And then I just would glue that to the inside of the card. And I won't do that right now, but you can see, okay, this one I've already done. And then you can see how the inside would look. I think it looks nice if you stamp with red ink on the inside because that way it will really pop the greeting. And you can add some pool party hearts just to kind of soften it a little bit around the edges. So that's how I would do that card. I just wanted to show you how cool this mailbox is. It's so neat, isn't it? I don't know if any of you have that um, bundle yet, but it is a really fun one um, for sending uh, interactive love cards or Valentine's Day cards or I miss you cards or friendship cards. It's great for that because the recipient will get the little little envelope and here's my, my little one that I did. And then you can write a really teeny tiny message in on the inside and it can be like a little secret message. Oh, mine's stuck. But I just did I love you. But if you have small handwriting or you could type it up on the computer, um, you can put a little thing on the inside and you can just duck it in. And it can be a little teeny tiny love message or a little, you don't have to put a heart. You could put like um, a flower. Oh, you know what I forgot to put on the bottom of my things? Look, I did some of these hearts and flowers jewels on one of them. Let's bop over. Always forgetting things, but where are my little hearts and flowers here they are these are just like really fun shapes and they're fairly flat and they've got a real kind of shiny glossy look to them so I am just going to I I'm going to stick with my um, pattern with the white um, flowers and the yellow centers and I'll just put some down on here on this mound and that just adds a little bit of fun fun to the bottom right just a little extra interest and or you could use the little hearts you could use the little heart on the envelope too because there's some little little hearts you can use some of those on there these are really fun okay so I forgot to tell you all about my host code and about celebration because we have a celebration starter kit special but we also have uh, celebration products that you can earn with every 50 or $100 you spend. And you also get a reward if you spend $50 with me using this host code. So you get double rewarded this month. The celebration products that you earn will be sent with your order. The gift from me will be sent in February. And this month, let me see if I still have them up here. Oh, here they are. This is the gift this month. Um, and so um, there are these little um, uh, adhesive back gems in these ombre colors. So that's what will be mailed to you in February if you place an order of at least $50 with me using this host code in January. And then Stampin' Up, if you want to know um, what your rewards are for Stampin' Up, I have to update my specials page, but I'll, I'll link it over to um, the celebration um, offerings so that you can see what you can earn um, with $50, every $50 you spend, or there's also options for $100 spent. So you can pick and choose. Um, if you spend $100, you can pick two level one uh, items um, that's perfectly fine or you can choose the higher level $100 items totally up to you it's so fun I've 
I have a whole bunch of paper that I um, earned from uh, from buying celebration, from buying products, I earned celebration products. So there's a whole bunch of paper that is available. There's stamp sets, there's um, a dies, there's an embossing folder, there's ribbon, and there's, so there's a lot of things to, to earn um, potentially um, this month, actually, and it goes all the way into February. So I just wanted to pop those up there and let you know what that's all about. Okay, I always forget things. Um, and if you like this video, if you liked my card, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will really help me get seen by other people. And I appreciate that so much. And leave me a comment. <laughs> I'd love to read your comments. Thank you. All right, I'm going to talk to everyone who's here today. Hello, Mary. Oh, you have rain in Indiana. That's what we're going to get later today. We're going to get rain on top of this foot of snow we have here. It's not going to be pretty, um, but uh, we'll deal with it, right? Um, good morning, Patricia from Montana. Hello, Rhonda. Uh, Rhonda says, I hope you're not too snowed in. We did get, we did get snow. I haven't left the house since it's snowed, but the roads are absolutely fine. Um, they cleaned, um, they cleaned our road at least three times during the storm. And they even have a little, uh, a little, um, bobcat snowplow because we have a school nearby and they clean the sidewalks, not perfectly, but we have some areas that, of sidewalk that aren't that don't have a house in front of them so they actually take that little bobcat around our whole walking loop it just happens to be our walking loop and um, they've they've cleaned it so that we can actually walk which is fabulous I didn't know that they would do that so I, I was so excited when a neighbor told me that they um, do a little snow plowing of the sidewalks too I was like yay because I love to walk and um, uh, we've already walked twice since since we had all that snow and we were able to do it. So, yay. All right, um, I, I always digress, don't I? Uh, hello, Marty from Slushy Pittsburgh. Ugh, that's what we're heading to next. Um, hello, Holly. Hello, Diane. Uh, hello, Ellie. You only got an inch of snow. Well, that's not too bad. I hope you didn't get all that other snow that we got the other day. Hello, Holly from California. She's gonna have rain today. Hello, Deborah from windy, rainy Virginia Beach. Yeah, you're gonna get some weather coming up that coast there, some windy weather. Hello, Mary. Um, hello, Janet. Holly says she loves it. Mary loves the car too. Oh, Amy has a two hour school delay. Oh, lots of snow and wind and power outage. Amy's in Washington state. So, oh, well, I hope everyone stays safe, Amy. Um, hello, Denise from South Dakota. Good morning, Janine. Hello to Sue from Texas. She says she's glad to finally catch a live. Cold and windy today. Expecting snow this weekend. Yay. Well, I'm glad you're excited about the snow. And if you ever want to come play in some more snow, come up here to the north, to the northern lands, where we have lots of snow. And we'd like to ship it south to everyone, to our southern friends, so they can have some fun playing with it. Um, um, Marty says, thanks for showing the fit for the mini machine. So the dies that I use today, they do fit the mini machine. You just need to be a little bit creative or turn them a little bit to get them through. Marty also says the mailbox is so cute. I want a pool party mailbox. I, you know what, you know what made me decide to get a pool party mailbox? I, oh, where's my catalog? I'm going to grab it real quick if I can find it. So I always, you know, I like to have the easy button, right? I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff on my screen real quick. Okay. I like to have an easy button, right? So um, I actually went to the page in the catalog where they had 
<laughs> these mailboxes. Look, there is my mailbox right there um, with, in pool party and um, with the crumb cake and the granny apple green. I followed the pattern in the catalog. So um, that's what I do, first of all, because I don't always have time to like dream up a color combination or I look at their color combination and say, oh, no, I'd rather use this color. But it's good to have a starting point. So use your catalog as a reference because that's it's that's what it's there for. There's artists that artists that have probably actually went to school for art that design our stamps and make projects with the stamps to share with us and so we should use that as a guide because you don't have to but if you need a starting point go back to your catalog and look at the product and have a look at the sample it might inspire you so i'm telling you i'd use the easy button <laughs> mary emote says she has the bundle coming oh good awesome Oh, Carol, you're here from Vancouver. Our son was just living there for four months. Now he's back, but he said he loved, loved, loved Vancouver. And, you know, I'm a fellow British Columbian, but I live in Massachusetts right now. But that's my home province. So um, welcome, Carol. Hello, Deidre from cold Mississippi. And I feel for you because I know when it gets cold in the south, it's terrible because no one's used to it. They don't, you don't have the winter weather gear and it's tough on you guys. I hope it warms up soon. Mary says hello from snowy Kansas City. Um, uh, Ellie says she loves the the live card in the mailbox yeah it's fun isn't it having the little teeny tiny card um Deidre says love this set just not sure how much I would use it it is adorable though well you know I guess it just kind of depends um how you want to use it I have used it in a pure valentine's fashion in an overt valentine's fashion but just imagine here for a moment let's take this um back color and let's not go full on red. You could still do a red flag on the mailbox because that's traditional, but you could tone it down a bit. And this could be a wonderful birthday card. Think about this as, as a birthday card too, because then it's got more versatility than just a, you know, um, a love you card. And mine, oops, that's the wrong card. I didn't put the inside on this one, but this one right here says, I miss you, but you know, turn it into whatever card, whatever card you want to mail could be in, in there in the little tiny mailbox, you could stamp a flower on the, 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 the envelope. You could stamp something else, anything that's teeny tiny or small, or make the envelope out of designer series paper. That would also be a really cute look. So just, just think about this as a card for other occasions too, because we get all sorts of things in our mailbox don't make it a card that has a bill coming out of the uh, mailbox. We don't want that. We don't want any uh, junk mail. We want like a sweet little card coming out. But I think it would make a fabulous birthday card. So, you know, it, it kind of just depends what, what you want to do with it. Okay, let's see. Ellie says, this looks like the cavernous mailbox at my new house. I'll just put a 16 inch on it with the flowers on the hold. <laughs> you, do you have a really big mailbox, Ellie? Um, and Mary says, so cute. Denise says, very cute card. Um, I'm trying to see if there's more comments. Okay, Ellie says, the last two places I've lived. We had a huge rural mailbox. I loved it. Now my mailbox is on the house. It's big, but sometimes things don't fit. Oh, yeah. So we have a rural mailbox down at the end of our driveway where the mail um, carrier drives up and puts things in. In our last place, we had uh, a, like a, someone that actually dropped mail in our slot. So there's all different kinds of mailboxes uh, out there. Um, yeah, but this one's a very traditional one for the U.S. So it's it's kind of I think everyone who would see it would 
know know what it was right and I would have a memory of a place where they've had a mailbox like that um and someone i'm not sure who this is because it doesn't have a name attached but it says i love the braid like well thank you i just kind of winged i just just kind of did it i just didn't even have a, a pattern in mind but it worked out really Hi, Laura. Um, I'll, you'll catch the replay. I'm glad that you're here, though. Marty says she got the bundle, but it hasn't come yet. It's supposed to come tomorrow. Well, then you can start playing with it right away. Um, hello, Diane. And she says, cute card. And Sue says, thumbs up. And Carol, another Carol, says, hello from Connecticut. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed the card. Uh, if you have any questions, check down in the description of my video. I leave a lot of information down there. You might need to click on the show more. There'll be a link over to my blog post. There'll be a link to my supply list, to the Stampin' Up! store. A lot of information is there for you. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Okay, everyone, I hope you have a great week. I will be back on Friday with a probably a 3D project. Um, I haven't designed it yet, but it will be Valentine's related again. I want to get as many Valentine's projects in um, so that if you need to order anything to make them, that you still have time. So I hope you'll join me on Friday. I usually go live around 10 a.m. on Friday. Um, I'll be Oh, both on YouTube and on Facebook. Have a wonderful day and I'll see hopefully some of you at the end of the week. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.